Howdy hunters, let's talk damage, specifically damage calculation. Keep in mind that none of the info I'm about to get into is remotely necessary for you to play or enjoy the game. This is just something that I and many others find interesting, and it can be fun to toy around with. If you're a min-maxer, you'll definitely want to know this, and if you don't care about min-maxing, you might still find it interesting, so I hope you stick around. Anyway, let's get on with the math. Here's the equation for damage calculation, ignoring critical hits for now. This may mean absolutely nothing to you at the moment, but we'll go through it one part at a time, and in just a few minutes, you'll understand it perfectly. Starting with raw, raw is the damage value of your weapon, as seen in your equipment info. But hold on. By default, this value is sort of a lie. The shown damage values are all multiplied by a per weapon type coefficient, which is meant to give you an idea of the single hit strength of each weapon compared to a weapon of a different weapon type. This is not the actual number used in the game's calculations. To fix this, let's head into our settings where we can change the weapon attack power display to display without coefficient. This will allow us to see the true damage value of our weapons. This true value is what we use for the raw variable in our equation. Next is the MV, short for motion value. A motion value is a unique number tied to each attack on a given weapon. It functions as a percentage that determines how much of your weapon's raw damage value will be used in each attack. Essentially, the motion value is the strength of a given attack. Now sharp. This is your weapon's current sharpness. Sharpness acts as a damage multiplier, with each sharpness level affecting your damage positively, neutrally, or negatively. Here are the sharpness multipliers. If you're using a ranged weapon, you can omit this sharpness variable entirely, since you don't have sharpness on your weapon. Finally, HZV. Monsters have what are called hit zones, which are essentially just the different parts of the monster's body. Hit zones have hit zone values, which determine how much damage certain parts of a monster will take from certain damage types. The hit zone values indicate what percentage of your attack, after factoring in sharpness and motion values, will actually be dealt. So higher hit zone values are better. This is what determines a monster's weak points and not so weak points. Let's look at some examples before we add elemental damage or critical hits into the equation. I'm here in the training area with the Hope Blade 2 Greatsword, which has a raw of 100, and it's currently at green sharpness, which gives a raw damage multiplier of 1.05. Looking at our motion value chart, which the community has so lovingly figured out and made available, we know that our basic charge slash, when fully charged, has a motion value of 160. Remember, motion values are a percentage, so we'll use 1.6 in the equation. We also know, thanks to the community, that the training dummy has a hit zone value of 80 on almost every part of it. We know that hit zone values are also a percentage, so we'll be using 0.8 in the equation. If we hit the dummy with a fully charged slash, it should do 134.4 damage. Let's test it out. Yep. 134.4. Let's try one more. How about the same attack, but without charging it at all? The uncharged motion value of this attack is 78, which becomes 0.78 since it's a percentage, and we can reuse all of the other numbers since our weapon and target have not changed. 100 times 0.78 times 1.05 times 0.8 equals 65.52. The game rounds to the nearest tenth, so this will actually be 65.5 when we hit. Let's check. Yep, 65.5, perfect. Okay, but a lot of weapons have elemental damage on them. How does that get calculated? I'm now using a different greatsword. This one has 140 fire damage on it. Just like our raw damage, before we change that coefficient setting, our elemental damage is also being secretly inflated. There's no setting to change this one, unfortunately, but Thankfully, the math is easy. This value on all weapons is inflated by a factor of 10 times, which means all we have to do is divide by 10. So this weapon has 14 fire damage. LM times EMV times E sharp times EHZV equals total element. We use the same equation as before, but this time every variable will need to use the appropriate elemental value. The motion values, sharpness multipliers, and hit zone values are all different for elemental damage than they are for raw damage. Again, ranged weapons can omit the sharpness variable. Now with our elemental weapon, let's use the same attack as before, the fully charged slash. Our elemental value is 14 as we already determined. The elemental motion value for the charged slash is 1.3. 
The elemental sharpness multiplier is just 1.0 for green sharpness, and the fire hit zone value, in fact all elemental values on the dummy, are 30. Converted from a percentage is 0.3. So that's 14 times 1.3 times 1, which you could omit, times 0.3 equals 5.46. Rounding to the nearest tenth, that'll be 5.5. Now we simply add that to our previously calculated total raw, 134 plus 5.5 is 139.9. Let's check and... Yep, 139.9. You might be thinking a damage increase of 5.5 is pretty low when we were already doing 134. Is element even worth using? And the answer is yes. And no. First of all, the weapon I used for that example had a really low elemental damage, only 14. Aside from that though, it is weapon type and monster dependent. Some weapon types have better elemental motion values than others, meaning elemental damage will contribute more to the final damage. Some monsters have more generous elemental hit zone values than others, meaning some monsters will take significantly more from their respective elemental weaknesses, while for others, element may not do much at all. Typically, the rule is that faster weapons with lower per hit raw damage, such as dual blades, benefit more from using element, while slower weapons with higher per hit damage, such as the greatsword, benefit less from element. That's not to say that element is useless on slower weapons, it's just not as beneficial. I'm using Hope Blade 2 again, which we know did 134.4 damage on this dummy with a fully charged slash. I've equipped some skills now that'll give me affinity, allowing me to get a critical hit, and I don't have critical boost, so the modifier should be 1.25. Let's test it. 134.4 times 1.25 is 168. There it is. It's important to note that elemental damage isn't affected by critical hits unless you have the critical element skill. The critical element skill can go up to level 3 with a different critical hit modifier for each level. The way this works is a little strange though, and the critical element modifiers are actually different for every weapon, with the weapons you would actually want critical element on having the lower multipliers. Unfortunately, critical element is very weak as of title update 1. As it stands, it's not really worth using, so I don't feel a need to cover it in depth in this video. If you're wanting to use elemental damage, just know that pretty much every other skill that boosts elemental is going to give you better results than critical element. Now I'm using a status weapon. I've unequipped all of my armor so that I don't have skills influencing the results. Just like elemental damage, status values are inflated by a factor of 10. So we're going to drop this zero for our math. And also just like elemental damage, there are different motion values for status buildup, separate from the raw motion value and from the elemental motion value, although the elemental and status motion values are often identical. For this demonstration, I'll be using a sword and shield, since the basic chop combo has a flat 1.0 status motion value. We're also using blast, because it's easy to see when you get a status hit, and when the status itself triggers. Let me show you what I mean by a status hit. See those sparks there? That was a status hit. That means that that attack dealt status buildup. Not every attack does. In fact, it's a 1 in 3 chance per attack that you will inflict status buildup. Since we already determined that this weapon has 15 blast, and the status motion value on that combo I'm using is 1.0, that means every single one of those status hits I'm doing on this dummy are dealing 15 blast buildup. The way status works in this game is that there's an invisible bar that we need to fill. That bar's maximum is different for every status and for every monster, but once we fill it, the status effect triggers. After you've triggered a status effect, that bar sets back down to zero, and the maximum on the bar the threshold increases, making it take more status hits to build up and trigger the effect a second or third or fourth time. That threshold increases every single time until you hit a very large maximum threshold on the monster where your status just kind of stops happening. The training dummy here has a blast threshold of 70 with a blast tolerance rate of 30. This means that once we've dealt 70 blast, the full blast effect will trigger, the dummy's buildup will reset, and the threshold will raise by 30, meaning we'll need to get 100 buildup for another blast, and then 130, and so on until the dummy reaches its maximum tolerance of 670. Let's test this out. We'll go for two blast triggers. We know that with 15 blast damage, we'll need five status hits for the first threshold. That's 15 times five for 75. First threshold 70, and then another seven hits for the second threshold. 15 times seven is 105, 
This second threshold is 100. So let's try this out. We'll count those status hits and we'll see if we're right. And that's pretty much everything you need to know for basic damage calculation in Monster Hunter Wilds. If you want to know more about this stuff, there is plenty more. I'll leave a link to a channel called Dreaming Suntide. He's a physicist who does a lot of Monster Hunter calculations on all the damage skills, optimal builds, things like that. He's super cool, super useful. He really knows what he's talking about. So check him out. Link in the description for his channel. Also in the description, you'll find a link for Karenico where you can view monster hit zone values, as well as a link for the motion value spreadsheet that I used in this video. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and maybe even subscribe if you're feeling generous. While I was editing this, we hit 100 subscribers. It's really not a huge number, but it means a lot to me. So thank you. And as always, take care and happy hunting.